Hey friends, you're watching Brainstorm Acres. I'm Henry and I'm on the way to town again. Yesterday I spent seven hours on the road going down to Prescott to pick up the things that I couldn't pick up the day before because they weren't ready. And the day before we had to drive down to go get some inoculations and a few other things. And the day before, same routine. Well, right now I'm here on the homestead getting ready to go through the gate have to go in and pick up some fuel, do a few other things in town. This is only going to be an hour and a half trip. Well, we'll see. Our community water station has been improved several times in the past six months. Now it has a bill changer for dispensing water. Water is pumped underground out to a hose that can sit in a tote or a water barrel. What do you do when there's no power within more than a mile of a water station? Well, the answer is you use a solar-powered trailer. This trailer supplies the power necessary to pump water from those tanks up and over to the dispensing nozzle in the hose. There are six water tanks, each of which holds 2,500 gallons. That's a good amount of water, but it does get used up. Solar power is great for running the convenience pump that pumps water to people's storage tanks. But in order to run the well pump, it takes a lot of power. There is a primary generator here and a backup generator. It takes a fair amount of equipment to actually keep this place running. And of course, it takes some knowledge and skill. The well pump has a problem. The pump may be burned out, it may have been miswired, there could have been all kinds of things that went wrong, and it even could be just a wire that's not connected down in the well casing. It takes a lot of equipment to find out. Pulling a pump that's over a thousand feet down under the ground is quite a lot of work. It takes some real power. You don't normally think about it, but when you're pulling a pump up from 12 or 1300 feet below the surface, it takes some effort. Until the community water well starts working again, people have to drive into town and pull water from several more miles away. These range cattle are tough. It requires water and some amount of food. There's a saying that where we live, it takes 100 acres per cow instead of 100 cows per acre. Well, that's a bit of an overstatement, but I think you get the idea. We were lucky today because a heifer had just given birth to a calf. She's busy licking it to get the afterbirth and everything else cleaned up. It may make it. There were two live births relatively recently. One is all cleaned up and is laying down. The other is being cleaned up right now. 
One heifer comes to sniff to see if that's her calf, and then goes over to hers. Our well-being down affects more than just people. There is a herd of cows that have a water source that comes from that same well. They're hanging around licking the salt lick, but they're also looking for water. Sadly, there's no water, so they'll have to go find some someplace else. The rest of the herd that you've seen are from the same group of cattle. Having the well be down affects commercial deliveries as well. It means that water trucks have to go an additional 12 or 13 miles round trip to make one delivery of water. That's a problem because it raises the price of a load of water. Most of the cattle on the ranch are either steers or heifers. That is, they had their male bits removed or their cows that are used for breeding stock. This bull is there to make sure that the cows continue to get pregnant. You can see that some of these cows really expect to be getting water over here at the water station. They're not terribly afraid of cars because cars go up and down the road all day long. Cattle are spread over the ranch over about three and a half miles. That's quite a lot of distance. And as you may have noticed, there's not a lot of cattle congregating together. And that's because there's not a whole lot of food. So they find a place to eat. <laughs> 